in this special episode of Dangerous Flights. That pissed me off. Ground turbulence. Do you want to give me 1,200 bucks? That's a bull number. The hired guns of the sky. What's up, guys? Take aim. Right? I do not tolerate that. At each other. I don't know what's going on. Well, why would you take a flight like that? That's a good way to get killed. Ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking. The rookies. This new copa that I have. Oh, boy. Get worked over. I'm not even sure if he's out of his diapers yet. Take this one off, that camera. Plus, original bonus footage. We're not going to risk getting them thrown in jail. Rare access behind the scenes. A helicopter follows us along and gets different shots. Hey, right, look at that. Surprising confessions. It was the most traumatic trip of my entire career. And... Police federal. Federal police. An exclusive look ahead at the Dangerous Flights finale. If he gets thrown into some Brazilian jail, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Let's go, boys. So climb on board as Dangerous Flights throttles forward. Let's roll. I was speaking thunder for the real Are you kidding me right now? You cry from the border. This will be fun, seeing all the guys. And one of the reasons I want to get together here is Montreal had a huge part in early ferry flying. You know, there's a big push for World War II getting all the bombers over to Great Britain. This was like the last launching ground where all the ferry pilots would take them over to the North Atlantic. Basically the same route that we're doing. Really? And they said there was more dangerous flying, flying the planes over there than actually flying in the war. Those guys are bad balls. Bad balls. Hello, ladies. And good. Now, look at this motley crew. What's up, guys? What's up, hey, Marjorie. How are you doing? Good, good, to, see you, good, good to see you. Hey, so what in the hell are we doing at this Green Hornet? Back in World War II, all of the ferry pilots used to meet here and hang out, drink beer, and then even listen to the weather before they launched over the Atlantic. I don't think they've changed the decor either since then. <laughs> Every pilot at this table got worked over this year. Let's brief it up. Okay. No one more than Boss Corey. 60 hours of flying, every weather scenario possible. It's a learning opportunity for you. I want you to fly like you're a captain. I want you to start thinking like you're a captain. I think we're in a boss. It's a problem. Corey is on the front lines like never before. The temperature we're at, there would be massive icing down below. Corey, pop the boots. The time? Yeah. OK, here they come. Boots coming on. Last season, Corey was the guy in the suit, pushing the pilots to help get his new plane delivery business off the ground. I can't stress enough, guys, the emergency to get this plane to the new owner. Right now, we're not sure the plane's ready. We have to get it there tonight. We don't have to do anything. This time out, it's ace pilot Pete, who's got Corey under the gun. All right, Corey, what do you got? What's the, is this gonna work? Hit with bad headwinds, Corey has to decide fast, turn back, or risk running out of gas over the North Atlantic Ocean. We said 25 knots is our max headwind component that we can do this trip, and we're at 25 knots. Well, there was a few times during that flight he said, OK, it's your decision. What are we going to do? And, and I really had to act like he wasn't there. OK, if he wasn't here, what am I going to do? That it was tempting to go, well, what would you do? <laughs> well, I said, don't act like I'm not here. Fly like I'm not here. I'm not here. This decision's right on the line. I mean, this is the captain's job, and he got to be right. Pete pushed me out of my comfort zone a couple of times, and it was, it was good. I want Corey to get some exposure into mountain airports. 
Where the hell's the airport? Right there, Rob. And Korshval epitomizes what a mountain airport's all about. Oh my god! <laughs> That's not an airport. It's not. We're approaching the holy grail of dangerous airports. It's short. It has a huge grade to it. You're landing uphill. It's a difficult runway, difficult terrain, and it demands a lot, and I want them to see that. Uh, just to let you know, there's a mountain right in front of them. Yeah, you gotta go right, right at the mountain. Corcheval is awesome. You know, the top 10 dangerous airports and all that, that's cool enough. It's just fun. It is a pilot's airport. All right, power and temperatures look good. You're at 82 knots. Correcting. The approach speed into Corcheval is critical. Too slow, you're not gonna make it. Too fast, you're gonna hit the mountain. Looking good, holy. Eighty, perfect, power set, perfect. Eighty. Seventy-five. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Traffic, <laughs> traffic. Cool, isn't it? That was insane. <laughs> Dude, we're at the top of the Alps. You just landed on an uphill runway. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. It was awesome. Was it really? I would love to go there someday. It was, all, it was fun, dude. It was awesome. All right, big boy. The takeoff is off the charts. Let's go get after it. <laughs> Airspeed is alive. Power is set. You've got a good engine. 40 knots. Oh, my God. <laughs> 45, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. 85. <laughs> and it's just a straight drop off. Oh my god. That is wild. <laughs> now that trip I learned a ton. This last year, I felt like I was a little bit more part of the group than I was the year before. But Corey's still boss man first to these guys. In this sneak peek of the season finale. It can be done. No, it can't. It cannot. Corey butts heads big time with Brad after insisting he fly slow to save money. We're pros. That's what insults me the most is that I'm a pro. I've been doing this professionally for like 12 or 13 years and we're being preached to by someone who doesn't even have a 1,000 hours. It's not realistic to fly the plane that way. I'm sorry, I disagree. I if I'm going to lose seven to 10 grand to do these flights. Why are you telling me seven to 10 grand? That's a bull number. It's, it's not true, so it's not Whether it's, not it's a, seven it's to not 10 a grand or 1,200, OK, but it's still 1,200 um, of my money. Do you want to give me 1,200 bucks? I know how to fly this thing. I don't need I'm it. I'm like, I do not to tolerate that at all. I do not tolerate that. You don't tolerate what? It makes me long for the good old days. The owner couldn't contact me. It was impossible. I left. Yeah. It's like the World War II days. I disappeared into the haze. No radio, no contact. Do you guys need to hug? <laughs> hug it out. <laughs> we're good. You know, World War II, they were signing up pilots as fast as they could. And a lot of these ferry pilots were very young, very inexperienced. And now we've kind of brought a couple new young pilots in to our group. Here they Hello. are. Oh, hey, fellas. Hey. Give a chair. How are you guys doing? Good, fine, good, fine. Good. good to see you all. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Claire, what about you? Flying with the old man? A lot of the times on our trip, my dad put me under a lot of stress that I guess I wasn't prepared to handle. I mean, there wasn't any room for error, which I understood, but doing it his way or the highway was definitely how it went. <laughs> Concentrate on your heading in here. I'm trying, it's just... I know. Just listen. 
you're going through the clouds, just just stare at the artificial horizon. I know, yes. I know you know. Watch these birds. A little, a little correction. Easy corrections. Mellow up. Mellow up. Now you're overshooting. You're still, now you've overshot it. Go back. Dad. I've got it. You gotta listen to me when I'm trying to teach you something. <laughs> <laughs> Waste a lot of gas and energy if you're flying all over the place constantly, banking the plane, flying like a drunken sailor. I'm not gonna say exactly. I understand, but every time prior to that, you overshot it by six yeah, or seven degrees. It I understand that it happens, but you have to get better at it. Well, I know, but I've got it once. I'm not stupid. I know what well, you said. Well, when I tell you to do so something the first try. time, don't argue with me. Just say, okay, That's what I'll I try. I, you didn't I, try. I, I, and don't <laughs> tell me to, you know, stop. Don't tell me anything. I know it all, because you don't know it all. You don't know hardly anything. I'm not going to get any better with you yelling in my ear. Okay, well, first of all, you learn the lesson of a good co-pilot. Just do exactly what I say, exactly how I want it done the first time, and we'll be just fine. I've heard that many times. <laughs> yep. In the Dangerous Flights finale, the pressure on Claire ratchets up. All right, Claire. If I catch you taking pictures on takeoff again, I mean, you're not flying the rest of the trip. Carrie expects more of her on each leg of the flight. Flying down this low, we have another thing besides airplanes to run into. Towers. There's just a million flight schools here and a billion students all buzzing around. This new copa that I have, I understand he's very young. I haven't met the kid yet. I'm not even sure if he's out of his diapers yet. Shit! Shit! Ladies and gentlemen, captain speaking from the left hand side. Jeez. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh boy. Yeah. I started to fly when I was 15. Lex is a 20-year-old pilot who thinks big. Engaged myself in the aircraft uh, brokerage business. He literally begged Marcio to take him on a jet delivery. So Lex, what was the high points and the low points of flying with Mr. Marcio? The low point was flying with Marcio. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Nice meeting man. you. My pleasure. Alex, nice How to meet you? you. Nice Fine. to meet you. The guy walks in and the first thing I look at is the three-day beard, you know, I said, wow, whoa. So uh, you do have a shaving kit, correct? Yeah, I do. Uh, very good, okay. <laughs> Surprised to let him fly. I don't think you should show up for a brand new job with a three-day beard, T-shirt, and jeans, and some hippie kind of bracelets. Kid is below standards <laughs> as, as of right now. So, <laughs> seeing it now, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> because uh, I learned a lot. Now you know why I won't let you fly with me if you showed up like oh, that. Yeah. He was a pretty gracious guy. Oh, yeah. He's 20 years old. I mean, someone has to grab his hand and say, listen, we're going to have to change that. It would be comfortable for me just to say, okay, man, whatever, I don't care, just sit there and shut up. But I think it was my duty to kind of uh, help him out. You know, I've been requesting a nice clean shave <laughs> from Lex for the last few days. It hasn't been complied with, so I think that little uh, intervention is required. Are you sure he knows how to do that? All right, easy does it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I look like a nerd. He's looking like a nerd. Well, that's what a pilot's supposed to look like. Look at that kid. They're really good. Lex, very nice. Nice, huh? Hey, you look professional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. Cleaned him up good. Turn around. Yeah. 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 Nice it did job, look Lex. better. It, and that's probably why uh, I have a job now, because I turned up there with short hair, shaved, nice and clean. What was the biggest thing you learned? Don't piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> Remember 600 Golf Yankee, ready for descent. They want us to be a certain speed here. We're at 300 knots, dude. The important thing you gotta keep an eye on. See, that's why I need you to have my back. I'm, I'm at 300 knots. Pay attention, okay? 
It's the speed below 10,000 feet everywhere. 215 knots. Why did you say something? Damn. <laughs> Lex get a little schooling. You're kind of mean, Mercy. Well, you know, I was not expecting to become a teacher on that, especially going across the ocean to literally to the other side of the planet. Of course, a lot of pressure on him, so can I understand that there were some moments when he said, nah, I'm gonna say it now, shut up. <laughs> I was a little bit tough sometimes. Captain's privilege to be tough. Yeah, yeah sometimes you gotta go. All right, you know what a 1900 looks like, don't you? First one for me. Brad also wound up with a green co-pilot this year. Slow it down. Last season, he was partnered up with Pete. That pitch just beauty up. Yep, I got it. That was unbelievable. A test pilot and trainer. Here, select it up. Roger. Pete's logged serious time on everything from props. Ooh, I like it. Doing a little wheelie. <laughs> That's right. We're coming in in style. To high performance jets. If there was anyone that I could say in my career that could be a mentor, it would be him. Because he's done more, he's flown more airplanes than anyone <laughs> I've ever flown with. But this year, it's Brad who's on mentor duty. We need to get to work. Now he's captain, paired with Stu, who has a fraction of his experience. Up until now, I would never actually put my hand on a Beach 1900 as a pilot. I certainly hope that I can meet his expectation. Stu is in a, the biggest airplane he's ever been in before. First time flying in this country. First time we're flying together. Charlie Golf, uniform, and for whiskey. Uh, clear to take off to uh, 8,000. I don't think you're transmitting. Uh, is there a uniform whiskey squawking? Uh, what was the squawk again? 673? 734. Charlie Golf, uniform, and for clear to departure 06 left. No, we're not clear hey, for departure. Clear to line up right away. You gotta tighten up those radio calls. We're not clear right. for departure. Again, for uniform whiskey. You gotta cue your mic. Keep hitting the wrong one. There's one answer. Sorry, sir, it won't happen again. Yeah. What's going on? When you're in an aircraft that everything is for, and you're like, all right, everything kind of goes. Yeah, I hear you. That goes, takes, takes a step back, but it's all good. I have tons of time. See, that's what killed me. That phrase bugged me so bad. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. And I well, was trying you know, to be nice, this, but you could see I was, nah. it was bugging me. It wasn't me. It yeah, wasn't it wasn't me. me. It was this. No, no, no. When Sorry, it won't happen again. an excuse for a mistake, it's like, look, just say, I'll do better. I'll do better, right. I can't hear anything. It wasn't just Brad's co-pilot causing him grief. It's the window. The Beechcraft 1900 hadn't flown for two years. And that almost always means trouble. We need to turn back now. We're having multiple problems with the airplane. A big air pressure drop in the cabin pops open a vent window. Uh, I couldn't understand that. I, mean, I can't hear nothing. I could not hear the ATC controllers at all. Could you say again? I mean, you always want to gain confidence in your airplane, and it's like, what's going to go next? The altitude selector has failed. Brad and Stu find out just how much more can go wrong. The DI's boots are failed. In the dangerous flight's finale. The prop ice is failed, and the yaw dampener has failed. So that's six items. You have got to be kidding. Ever wondered how pilots cope with a full bladder? Got a little problem here, Marcio. Yeah. I gotta go pee pee. No, there's no pee pee here. Long flights and full bladders are always a bad combination. All right, boss, I think I lost the bet. Oh! You gotta pee, don't you? I don't think I'm gonna make it another two hours. And on these planes. Good luck, kid. We're all counting on you. No toilets. <laughs> uh, that was all true. Luckily, I had a really nice captain on the trip that was flying the plane very straight. He held straight. it for you? Well, <laughs> I asked. I even offered money, but he wouldn't. Making my way back to the VIP restroom. 
<laughs> the caravan's a little bit better than most. We do have a relief tube. The we have to go through. <laughs> of course, Pete just wouldn't let me get my business done. How's the pee had gone, Corey? Whoopsie, a little turbulence. Sorry, buddy. You are <laughs> Pete, we got a little situation. It's negative 22 out there, and this line is just frozen. I've never had this happen. Oh, God, this is gross. It takes only a few days for Corey to get sweet revenge. I gotta go whiz, dude. Dude, you gave me so much last time. Uh, I hope the line is frozen for you, just so you can understand what I had to go through. Yes, Tyler, we'd like to request an inverted roll. Snap roll. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, man. It's my turn. Here we go. My source of relief. I've been waiting for this for days. <laughs> 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 Junior! <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> we hit a small pocket of turbulence. It went away. Uh, you get a big. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you experienced that, but he was what? You know, 20 feet away? This guy was maybe two and a half inches away from me. It's not that short. <laughs> now I got my old fashioned uh, ferry pilot method here. Where are we going to see this coming? Two Ziploc bags. Oh, the Ziploc. Oh, man. I don't like the Ziploc method. It works fine. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, too much information. I got a little shrinkage problem here, but. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> It's been a while since I had to do this. A little trickier than I thought. Oh, man. They have mission accomplished. Why me? Why me? <laughs> I like doing it in a plane that has a, a window so you can eject the evidence. Yeah. But I always would save it for an opportune target. Like a ship over the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Bums away. <laughs> Can you imagine you're working on that ship? You're just like <laughs> hey, doing your job and you get hit in the head with a bag back full of piss. piss. <laughs> <laughs> Marcio prefers his rides fully tricked out. Shazam! How you doing, beautiful? With plumbing and a roomy five-star setup. Oh, score. This thing is very, very new. So uh, we make sure we keep it nice and pretty. OK, that's all you get. <laughs> all we got, huh? <laughs> His first trip out this season. OK. Put him in a single engine sardine can. And now I'm flying this little bitty mosquito, you know, with one little propeller going Arr! So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, this is not a convertible. We can't fly it with the top down. Are you sure? It wasn't just the plane he had to squeeze into. This is not going to be pretty. It's looking good. OK. Chin way back. OK, that's good. I think that's as good we're going to get. You have to know your limitations. And uh, I am pretty sure I'm out of my comfort zone flying this little thing right now. It's here, it's back right there. Marcio's instincts were bang on. Marcio, didn't you guys have some oxygen problems in the Cirrus? I'm a jet pilot, man. I don't deal with this no oxygen <laughs> stuff, you know? How you feel, Marcio? Feeling just OK. Great. Feeling a little bit of signs of low oxygen? I was in bad shape. Um, you know what I should do? Maybe change the mouth. I was going to say, when you're flying this high, sometimes the nose pieces will get you the oxygen sufficiently, so I'll switch to the mask, and hopefully that will give a high enough flow. I don't know what's going on. There, I'll get it. Do you really feel it? 
Where's that other piece? I was panicking. I couldn't get the right tubes. Yeah, yeah, because you were deprived of oxygen. And, you know, have, I was switching from, from the nose to the mask, and I couldn't figure it out. Marcy went from a guy that's feeling just a little bit, taking that off, and all of a sudden I could just tell him you were on the verge of panic there. You just, you, all your motions, everything was going. It was like going, wow, this, this guy is no, losing it. Like, Imagine if it happened to both of you at the same time. Oh, that'd be that would be bad. That would be like you're alone. Or if, if you're I'm alone, alone, it's hard to admit this. I was pretty scared. Without a doubt, it was the most traumatic trip of my entire 10,000 plus hour career, which made it really fun for me. You disconnected his oxygen, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> In this exclusive sneak peek at our season finale, check out the right fuel indicator. Kerry has his own heart-stopping moment. You see any fuel coming out of the right side? Nope. We've still got 389 miles to go. I'm trying not to panic in front of Claire, but I'm pretty scared. I mean, we got to have that gas. We are out of gliding range for any of these islands. Why? Why? Don't give me this crap. And that's why the country's in the mess that it's in. Flying to every corner of the planet, you meet some real characters. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing? Are you well? How are you, Andrew? How are you doing? Good to see you again. Andrew Bruce is a legend in the plane delivery world. Got some suits for us, too? Couple here. He gives advice and gear to help pilots survive the North Atlantic crossing. Well, this one I got specially for you. Jumbo! <laughs> Pete and I had an experience where we met someone that was even a little bit more interesting on this last flight. Oh, Morning. They call me Polar Man. Polar Man, outstanding! Polar Man. Yeah. I'm Corey, nice to meet you, Polar Man. Yeah. Awesome. So you live up here, then I take yeah, it? Yeah, I do. Cool. <laughs> Dude's awesome. At one point, I mean, he grabbed up a bunch of snow and put snow down the back of his shirt. No! Yeah! Oh, take that out. Why? That's cold! <laughs> right there, my balls fell off. <laughs> it was so cold. Nice to meet you, Polar Man. You too. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah. Be good. You too. While Polar Man copes well in extreme conditions, Carrie and Claire need extra training to help them tough it out. I think this is, uh... A serious jungle. If you survive crashing here, the real test begins. See you guys. Huh? No shirt pants, no socks. Be careful. This is the time that the snakes are concentrated on the trail. They're small but venomous. So they use this ant here as a mosquito repellent. Huh. OK, that's kind of freaky. <laughs> this is insane. And you're like, uh, I don't think so. Get me to the hotel. <laughs> if you have a crash and be lost in the jungle, the animal that you should really look out of like is from the wild pig. The ones that goes in very big groups and they're cannibals. Huh. A, a herd of wild pigs. This is crazy. The guide almost made it seem like once you crash there, they're not going to find you. You have to fend for your own. So here's a couple tips, but you can't learn everything in one day. It basically was like you're dead. <laughs> it was basically yeah. just scaring me like into making sure we didn't crash. One of the great things about being a ferry pilot is experiencing new things, cultures, especially food. Uh, good food. <laughs> that's, that's it. Good food. Hey, Oz. Welcome and, to my humble house. Yeah. Oh, this is a great place you got here. Nice people there. Yeah, they're This, the black, is the dry meat of a, a whale. Uh-huh. And this is whale skin. You eat the skin and the fat? Yeah. OK. A small plopper. Do you call it plopper? Yeah, okay. plopper. It doesn't smell very nice, but <laughs> it tastes different. I'm a vegan, so. <laughs> well, now, now you're a vegan. Now you're vegan. Oh, fresh whale skin. Man. We're gonna have to get to that old pass. It's rude not to taste. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not an option. Just take one of those. Yeah. It's uh, different. 
It's different. Marcy, you don't, you don't look comfortable Marcy at all. Was, <laughs> he was not digging it. They're everywhere. In the season finale, they're teeming with monkey wildlife. Brad and Stu have a run-in with mischievous thieves in Africa. Yo, 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 hey. They're going after the bags. He's coming at me. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. In just two years, I see Africa. The pilots have landed on 137 runways in 54 countries, including some places on the official do not travel list. This is my first flight going into Sudan. All I've heard about is how dangerous Sudan is and how everything needs to be perfect. We've got cameras all over this airplane. Get rid of this camera. Definitely these. We've got three on the dash and, and big camera equipment in there. And it's illegal to film in Sudan. This camera here. Get rid of that cam. And get rid of the tail. The Sudanese see the cameras, and they think there's something about it but they don't like. They'll detain us. They'll ask for our passports. They won't give them back. It'll be a significant problem. We want to fuel and leave as quick as possible. Take this one off, that camera. Brackets and everything? No, brackets can stay. Well, their safety is what comes first, right? We don't want to, uh, for one or two shots, we're not going to risk getting them thrown in jail. Well, this is the leg that I was most stressed about for this entire trip, even more than the ocean crossing. Well, at least up here in the desert, we don't have to worry about service to air missiles. What, do we ever have to worry about that? Well, so it is a country that's been torn apart by war. I just hope to God this stop goes smooth, we get down, we get fuel, and we get back in the air. Final approach course is 357. And holy here we come, Sudan. I'm not looking forward to this. Taxiway Charlie, November, November, Dingo. Okay, I'm gonna get those cameras. Alpha, 40 zero Alpha. I'm gonna get the cameras. You got the uh, radios. Traffic, traffic. 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 Huge relief. Yes, it is. That one is behind us. <laughs> You're kind of a worry ward. It was pretty intense for a few minutes. I was a little sketched out. Okay, you got it. Ooh la la. The only time ferry pilots go looking for trouble, and I love how clean the cowl is, is before they leave the ground. Just a little, a little trick that, uh, you know, good old pilots do, they go, and you go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell if the airplane's overheated, you know, by the by the taste, you know, if it has a slight coppery taste to it. Here, a plane that looks first rate on the ground acts up. No, uh, no, I think we're doing something wrong. I know. Every time Carrie and Marcio pull back on the gas. Take control manually. I'm not comfortable being this far out of water, this slow, with that engine not. Okay, I got just, it. I got I, it. it. What we're planning for now is that we're stopping at any second. Quick 7 Charlie Alpha, we've got a rough running engine. We're going to take it in close. Bring 7 Charlie Alpha, Roger the Southern State. You take an emergency. You're supposed to keep going, and you can't stop for every tiny little thing. You, know, you can't wait for perfect weather. You can't wait for a plane that's in perfect condition, because they don't exist. Whether the storm is outside, we're gonna have lightning strikes now. God. Or in. Hey, Brent, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. coming. Lean awesome. back, lean back. Let me see what I'm doing. Cockpit cameras. Do, 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 do. Witness it all. Play behind my back. I haven't seen you whip out the flute yet on this, <laughs> this trip. The air flute? The air flute. <laughs> Filming the episodes of this show have been a lot of fun. But cockpit cameras can't snag those sky-high action shots. Here, an exclusive look at how it's done. 
You can't have a plane following us along the whole trip. It's just too expensive and not practical. We have a helicopter that follows us along and gets different shots, you know, right alongside, underneath, steep turns, all kinds of different stuff. OK, you on me? Copy that. Good. OK. There he comes in again. He's yeah, back yeah. OK, Kerry, we're going to get you to do some big wise, big turns um, in front of us. That's a nice light on you from here. Yep. We pick a spot that simulates whatever environment that we flew on our ferry trip and try to recreate it. OK, I'm going to come to this cloud. I'm going to make a left turn to let you catch up. Here we go, left, left, left. Nice, look at that. Beautiful, Chris. Right into, right into your bush. OK, you got your eye. I know. So Cineflex is a remotely operated camera. The controls are all from this laptop controller. Uh, we can run it inside the aircraft. Yeah, wow, look at that. Maybe just give us a punch in as he's doing that. Essentially, like working with a big video game. We're over land, holy In the plane delivery business, there are plenty of five-star views. Wow, there it is. What is it, the world's tallest building? Oh, right there. Check that out. Unbelievable. But usually... Sweet That's where the VIP treatment ends. I think, I think my shower curtain is covered with blood. Holy mama. Is this the Bates Motel? I'm gonna have to shower with my boots on, for God's sakes. I think this candle has seen more exciting days. <laughs> <laughs> this is badass. You check in at the hotel, you get in your room, you unpack your crap for the 18th time. Come get into a restaurant, maybe at 8 o'clock, get online. The Wi-Fi doesn't work, the code's wrong. All those little stupid things that make you just insane on the trip. In the season finale... Let's make like a baby and head out. Brad and Stu's passports might be the only way they remember where they went. So once we got out of Uganda, we were turning jet fuel into noise and really covering some ground. You get to see some amazing exotic places. The only problem is that you blow through them so fast, it can be really exhausting. You don't really notice it when you're flying because you're working, but it just floods over you. I'm just burnt out. I slid, I slid, I slid. Sometimes you just got to pull the plug. <laughs> It's a clear and evident fact. Tomorrow is a day off. We are not going to be going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> On this trip, our route just happened to take us almost directly right over my house, which was kind of cool. Welcome home. Hey, thanks, man. Good to see you again. See you. Chris, this is my buddy Marcio. Marcio, good to meet you, sir. Chris, how's the scotch? Yeah, scotch is good. Thanks, buddy. I've got a little hunting cabin up in the woods, and it was kind of nice to take him up there and Cheers. show him that and have him meet a couple of my pilot buddies. Nice. I met all his two friends. <laughs> all two of them. All both of them. <laughs> well, that's how you light a cigar in the North Woods. And that's how you do it. Yeah, this is what I live for. Hanging out with my flying friends, my pilot buddies. Some good drinks, some good friends, and some great flying stories. Cheers. It's like a fun night. Yeah, that was a real fun night. Yeah, it's cool. As much fun as you can have with no chicks. <laughs> Spend enough time with a guy. And you start to pick up his habits. Let's go flying, puppy. I got a sandwich for you, puppy. There we go, puppy. Puppy. Marcia drives on the airplane with a propeller. <laughs> I think it's both. On the season finale, is happening with this thing. Brad's way with words. It. Son of a god. It. Sat on my sunglasses here. Rubs off on Stu. Fell First down under my ass right as I sat on. I felt this go flat. What are we doing here? Flat. This thing is just taking a big old. Dude, you're together all day long. 
Man, I had the best bag of gummy bears of my life last night. Holy mama. After sitting next to the same guy for uh, 55 hours, you've covered it all. Fifth grade, I kissed my first girl. This girl named Sylvia, she was like Italian. Incredible. Okay, gas, three green undercarriage mixture props pumps, you're really fast. 95, watch your speed. Last year, if there was one person that was a little bit of a control freak and loved grabbing the controls. Carrie McCulley, control freak extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have your speed under control. Time point. He grabbed the stick from the boss during a landing. and blasted Stu all the way down to the runway. You know, when you grab the stick, which is the scariest feeling for me to have. You weren't correcting it fast enough for me. I wasn't yeah. going to let it go. But I was on it. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> No, we do have to congratulate Kerry, though, because I think he's done much better this year. We'll make the runway from here. We're uh, 500 and have 100 knots, OK? Just be careful. All right, your power, your airplane. Kerry <laughs> is starting to <laughs> cut in the umbilical cord. It's time. Do you have a first vector? Procedure, activate vectors to final. All right, you fly. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll keep my hands in my lap if at all possible. Yeah, it's well uh, done. hard to do, but... <laughs> you want to go your way, exactly. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> Sometimes when the other pilot is not doing it perfectly and there's even the remotest possibility, I was like, ah, I got it. An even tougher test for Carrie. So, Claire, uh, what do you think? You ready to land the big old beast? Get at me, landing. Was Claire's first landing in a plane she's not used to. Trust issues. Trust issues, <laughs> big time. Because no one can do it as good as I can. <laughs> Put some power in, you're gonna need power. Pull back just a little bit to get her speed. Give it just a little bit more gas. Don't let it sink, come on. Put your hand on the throttle. Uh. Oh, hands wow. up, Eva. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Yeah! Oh. yeah. Oh. Get that. <laughs> Get hands up. off. You know, this type of flying, it, it's just... It's a unique type of flying. It's kind of a special group. We've all talked about that before. It's kind of a fraternity, and it's hard to get into. Um, I was very fortunate to get into it and, and fly with some of the best pilots in the world, I believe. And I think you guys are incredibly fortunate to have this opportunity to fly and to get to do this type of stuff. Absolutely true. Definitely. I feel very fortunate just to even sit here with you guys, have a couple beers, and hear all your awesome experiences. And I've had one of my own so far, but Hope to have plenty more. You guys are very inspiring. And awesome. And awesome. We are incredible. Very awesome. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank all you guys for helping my business, helping me as a pilot, and, and just being here. Here's to many more flights. All right. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Keep the planes dry, gentlemen. Keep them dry. This is next time on the season finale of Dangerous Flights. Where are the, the, the tickets? A bad break in Brazil. Some <sighs> Lands Carey in hot water. Oh, I might be spending this Christmas in jail. 6-2 North, uh, actually, correction. And Attitude. Wait, what the are we doing here? At Altitude. That's the next one, man. A grueling journey takes its toll. It's totally unprofessional. Oh. Yeah, it is. That's on you, man, it's not on me.